Oh my God. Whatever this is, is huge. At the end of this video, I'm doing a fishing tackle giveaway. You don't want to miss it. Several different things going on. So be sure to watch this video all the way through to the very end. You're going to enjoy. There's some awesome fish catches. And again, at the end, an awesome giveaway. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. On one of my last videos, I got a ton of questions about one particular thing, and I think I can quickly answer it for you guys here in the shop by showing you one quick little demonstration. So let me pull the boat out, get it out of the way. Y'all just hang on one second. While I put my, I'm gonna put my camera down here, pull the boat out of the shop. While I'm doing this, y'all go ahead and subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell, and uh, I will be right back. All right, now one of the main questions that I got, and I, I get very often, is when you're learning how to cast or learning how to pitch accurately, how do you do that? What's the best way to learn? And truly, I don't see this a lot anymore, and I used to see it a ton, especially when I was growing up and I was getting into fishing. This was something that a lot of people did, and a lot of people talked about. Now it's just not talked about as much anymore, but it's still very, very helpful, and to be dead honest with you, I still do this a lot. Um, just give me one second. All right, now y'all may think this is silly and you know, the, I, I did this a lot when I was a kid, but I still do this a lot. That's get you three targets that you can set up and pitch at and make them different distances. I'll leave the bowl back here. I'm gonna scoot the cup a little bit closer and I'll probably, probably just scoot this over here a little bit. So they're a little bit different distances. You don't want everything to be the exact same. Here's the objective. Everyone wants to put their jig in a coffee mug, which is, takes a lot of time, you know, takes a lot of practice, but a coffee mug is definitely doable. And I think if you can get to be that accurate, you know, the better off you're going to be, but coffee mug isn't necessary. You want something that's even big enough, like a dog food bowl, or even what I'm going to show you is on this lure locker. You want something like this, because this is something that often happens. You have a target that you're pitching at, say this is the target, but you've got a tree or a stick or a stump, something in your way that's hindering you or a boat dock or, a, or a skipping under a pontoon boat. This is something that happens often. So if I can get my jig on here, uh, not hit the top of this and not miss it, that's gonna be a good thing. Uh, obviously this is gonna be a really hard one because it's small, but that's definitely doable as well with a little practice and a little, little get it dialed in. And I think this is probably gonna be the easiest one, but still, if you can hit a dog food bowl, Think about how small that is. I mean, it, that's still really, really small. So you don't have to be doing this, this shooting into a cup, even a five gallon bucket. If you can score a five gallon bucket, think about that. If I can put my bait on a five gallon bucket, I'm probably gonna be able to put him, my bait where the, where the fish is. So let's get this set up. I'm gonna show you guys what I do. I do this a lot to be dead honest. I do it too much actually. I don't know how well y'all can see me on this, but you can see that it takes a little practice. My second pitch, my third pitch, my fourth pitch. I'm all around it. I just haven't scored. Do it five pitches to get in the dog food bowl. Oh, that's the end. That's the end. Five tries to hit the cup. Let's try the lure lock box. The tray, but I didn't score it inside the. Yeah. Oh, come on, top. Oh, three. Four. Come on. There we go. Dead end right there. That's exactly what I was talking about. So, that's a coincidence that it took me five tries on all three. But as you can see, got it in right there. So, that, that's a super simple um, practice, but it, that's what exactly what it is. We all practiced basketball, we all practiced baseball or track, whatever it was, you, whether you play piano, we all practiced that when we were in school and we were younger. But practicing also, hey Coco, you're messing up my practice video. But I think we can definitely practice things like this too because it definitely makes a huge difference and not just scoring it. Don't get so upset if you're not scoring. Obviously the goal is to score, but um, I, I mean, just that motion and the speed is really what matters the most to be dead honest. But anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed that quick tip. Now I'm headed out to the lake. Me, Hannah, and Coco, it's a beautiful day. It's windy. So anyhow, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please smash that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys out on the water on the chesty here in just a few seconds. 
All right, guys, so uh, one thing that you guys are probably not aware of is the fact that this lake is muddy as heck right now. Um, I've tried filming a couple days, but I'm not gonna lie, it's been pretty tough. The water is crazy, crazy muddy out here. Um, it's windy as all get out, like it's the windiest. It's so, it's been so windy. The water's muddy, the water's rough. It's just tough. We we're right at the spawn. Obviously y'all have seen all my bed fishing videos and then we get this crap in, so it just messes things up for a little while, but um, that's what we get. So today I'm kind of got out of the wind. There's a, I don't know if y'all can see that mud line out there, but it's ridiculous how muddy it is out on the river. I found some clear water, the wind is howling, so I kind of got out of the wind. I'm gonna fish in this little pocket some. There's some grass, I'm gonna throw a chatterbait and a bull shad around, see if I can get some bites. So I'm gonna start with the bull shad today. Um, I love this bait. A lot of you may think that it is too big, but I promise you it's not too big. And the best way to fish this guy is as fast as you can throw it, I mean, as fast as you can reel it. Um, my favorite retrieve is just a really fast wind and they absolutely come and crush it. Uh, fish of all sizes eat this one. I think this is a, I don't remember the, the size of it. I think it's seven inch. And honestly, the water might be a little bit too muddy for it, but I'm gonna throw it for a little while. All right guys, really important. So I've been throwing that Six Sense Divine Swim Bait, this one right here. So it's really windy today. I think it's gonna be really key to keep your bait down in the grass. This paddle tail wants to lift that bait up out of, you know, it wants to, it wants to keep the bait up in the water column. So I'm switching to this Zayco, which I think is probably the best uh, chatterbait trailer, especially for the Z-Man, I mean for the, uh, for the jackhammer. So I've got just this dark one. So the water's a little bit muddy. It's a half ounce jackhammer. I'm just gonna thread that on. So that straight tail of this bait, whether you use a Fluke or a Zayco or a, whatever trailer you use, it doesn't matter. As long as it's got a straight tail and not a boot tail or a crawl, it's gonna help keep that bait down in the water column. And that's, sometimes that's really important. Sometimes it really doesn't matter. But on days like today, I think that's really important. It's windy. I'm fishing around grass. I want the bait down in the grass. That wind is also helping keep your bait up higher because it's grabbing more line. It's keeping more line out of the air, out of the water. So I think the whole thing, this is going to be the better option. So when y'all see me doing that, I'm just clearing my bait free of the grass. When I'm snapping it like that. Kind of looks like a hook set, but I want to be, I want to rip it and be able to get right back to the position I was in. A lot of times when I'm throwing a chatterbait, I don't like ripping it this way, ripping it out of the grass uh, if I don't have to, because a lot of times you're going to bite it right after you rip it. And so if you're back in this position, you can uh, catch the fish, get back on them a little bit quicker. First cast, dude. I literally just caught one of my first freaking cast on this spot. I've ran around everywhere. How about that? Little first caster. Bambo, baby. Little chunk. He ain't what we're hunting, but he's a mother freaking fish. I can't remember the last time I pulled up and caught one like that.
Oh my god. Whatever this is is huge. Oh no, it's not. Oh man. He freaking hit it and took off. Oh, dude, I've never had one hit it that hard in so long. And this is right where I just caught that other one up. And I fished past it too fast. I got to thinking about it. I was like, dude, I need to slow down and turn back and go back to there. And I literally just got here and caught this one. Good little chunk. Two and a half, maybe. Right where I caught that other one at. And I was being dumb. I, well, I don't say I was being dumb. I just wasn't really paying attention. I didn't... I should have slowed way down when I got that bite and fished it some more. Dude, I thought that I could have sworn that one was huge. That was a stone. For those of you who have never seen what I just did, that's called the slingshot method. And basically you hold your line. I'll play that clip again. You hold your line and you use your rod as a plug knocker, you gotta be in less than probably four foot. And one thing you don't want to happen is you don't want your reel to go underwater. If your reel goes underwater, it fills up with water and it just, it doesn't throw good anymore for a while, for an hour or so until it dries out. But if you can just get your rod tip in there and just barely tip the bait, sometimes it just literally takes your rod tip going down there and just barely touching the bait. It'll break your bait free and you don't gotta get in too close and mess up the cover or whatever you're fishing. Have y'all been catching them over here? No. I think I just had beginner's luck. <laughs> I never pulled I never pulled up before and just caught one first cast like that. Yeah. That never happens. Really? There's another one. That's a good one. I got a little school of them right here, man. I'm choking this thing. That's beginner's luck, I promise. <laughs> I'm throwing a chatterbait, black and blue chatterbait. There you go. Black and blue chatterbait, another little chunk. I think I got a little school of them right here because this is all in the same spot. I'm gonna go back through this one more time. One thing I've learned fishing on Gunnersville, and if any of y'all fish lakes where the fish really get schooled up. So this is just my opinion, but I believe that these fish, everybody talks about Gunnersville, how they school up offshore in the summertime and out on ledges. I've said this before on my channel too, but I, I think that these fish travel in schools on this lake and, and even this entire river, the whole Tennessee River. But those places where they pile up offshore and they're in big schools out deep, my opinion is they stay in those kind of schools the whole year so you know whether it's up shallow and obviously not around boat docks and stuff like that you're not going to catch a lot of fish but places where like i'm fishing a grass line right now that's just off this random bank and there's obviously a little school of fish here i don't think this is random i think there's actually a school i think these fish travel together probably all year long and they're just together that might, i mean I could be wrong about that, but that's just always how I viewed it. So a lot of times on this lake, I've learned to, when you get a couple bites, really, really slow down because there's a good chance you can catch a lot more fish um, making that same exact cast or just in the same exact area. Just slow down, make make some more cast. You know, don't, don't just hurry and get out of there. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Before before I even do the ending of this video, I wanted to show you a video I didn't get to finish the other day because I only caught one fish, but check out this swim jig bite I had the other day. Absolutely crazy. 
Well, for whatever in the heck reason, I could not get bit in uh, where I just was on that freaking chatterbait. Or I couldn't catch them on the chatterbait. I got bit. I'm trying to find a place that's out of the mud. The river is the muddiest I've ever seen it right now. And uh, they just are not biting in there. Actually, where I was, where I was getting those bites at, was not too bad muddy, honestly. Uh, it was kind of clean back there. Let me see if I can swim one up. Some of this shallow grass like this makes it not as, uh, not quite as muddy. Got him. God, what a freaking bite. That's the best swim jig bite I've ever had in my life. Oh my God. Dude, that was freaking insane. Thank you so much, fish. You just made my day. That was the best swim jig bite I've ever had in my life. That was stupid, dude. Good God almighty. What an awesome freaking bite. Oh, chonker too, son. Dude. Mother trucker, dude. That freaking fish just came on glued on it now. I ain't even seen one do it like that in a while. Need to check my dang underwear after that. All right, so this stuff's kind of thick. Y'all can tell it's like heavily matted on top. You can almost fish a, a rivet toad or, you know, horny toad or rivet frog or a hollow belly. You can fish a lot of stuff on this. You can flip in it. I'm just fishing a swim jig and I'm reeling it pretty fast over the top of it, similar to how you'd fish a, a uh, toad. I'm just kind of reeling it. It's just straight over the top. But that tail's behind him kicking. Another good bait to throw in this situation is a hollow belly frog. I'm sorry, a hollow belly swim bait. A hollow belly frog too would be good, but hollow belly swim bait, you catch a lot of fish doing this on a hollow belly swim bait. Mostly when the water's a little bit more clean, like when it's a little bit cleaner than this, I catch them on it. So yeah, that was an insane blow up. Um, smash them there. I only had one, only got one bite, which was weird though. But um, anyhow, awesome day. Uh, actually, today this video started with me doing the pitching, and I wanted to teach you guys that. And then we, me and Hannah and Coco went to the lake, and it was just tough. The wind was blowing super hard. Um, the waves were so so huge. And honestly, we got out to the main lake, saw how bad it was, turned around and came back. I went home, got a shower, edited some videos, and I was like. I'm not gonna let these fish beat me again. Um, I'm gonna go back out, fish till dark. I got out here at probably 4.30ish, it's 6.45 now. So fish a little over two hours, but I wanted to, I just had that feeling that I knew I could find something because the water's so muddy, the river's rolling so much, it's so windy. They've gotta be piled up somewhere. I was, just, I've been thinking that all day. I just didn't wanna, with Coco and with Hannah, beat them up really bad fishing around and running around. So anyhow, I finally found the fish. Um, I think in that stretch, I probably could have caught several more, but um, it was awesome to do that. I love when you can like put something together, together like that and fish thoroughly in an area and, and make sure you catch every single fish. I just love doing that. So yeah, a lot of fun I caught on this. Um, smoke HD reel that one's beat up it's probably three or four years old uh, quantum smoke s3 rod 7.3 I'm sorry 7.2 medium heavy 17 pound fluorocarbon uh, half ounce jackhammer chatterbait with a Zayco trailer um, and again I think I said it earlier on this video yeah I changed colors because I changed colors and I changed trailers to try to keep that bait down when it's super windy like that um, or like it was today the wind kind of grabs your line and, and you know if you've got a lot a big bow in your line it's pulling your bait up and so you can't really keep your bait down very good so I wanted to switch that Zayco so I can maximize my cast and efficiency so yeah a lot of fun I'm ready for this bite to to get good I'm ready to I'm ready for things to stabilize this year has been kind of weird because we haven't had things just stable yet which is just a little bit strange but Anyhow, it'll get good soon. I'm gonna keep making a lot of videos. So I hope you guys are enjoying them. The last two videos that I've made did really, really well on YouTube and I appreciate that. If you guys would, please do me a huge favor. Give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. Please subscribe to my channel. Turn on the notification bell so you get notified. And I wanted to remind you guys, I'm doing a giveaway. I'm actually doing two giveaways right now. The first one is a six cents six sack giveaway. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is subscribe to my channel, comment anything down below, and give this video a thumbs up. Three things, like, comment, subscribe, and you'll be eligible to win. And basically what I'm giving away 
is three months subscription to the Six Cents Six Sack, Super Six Sack. I'm gonna do the premium one, which is uh, $30 a month, and it gives you $50 to $60 worth of tackle. Basically, they come in a bag similar to this, or maybe even these bags. When you open them up, they've got premium fishing tackle in there. Probably two or three, four hard baits, um, two or three packs of, there, there's several different things, obviously, they can, they can have, but two or three different hard baits, two or three different packs of soft baits, a couple of jigs, a couple of packs of hooks, um, a, a rod sleeve, multiple different things they could have in those sacks. It's a really cool subscription. Um, if you wanted to sign up for that subscription sack, it's, it's the one that I use. I get them every single month and I'm super, I love getting them, I've said this before, but with the six sack, you get fish and tackle that you normally wouldn't have bought. And we're all buying fish and tackle anyways. We all have a habit of buying too much fish and tackle, but I, I often catch myself buying the same stuff. I always buy chatter baits. I always buy, you know, some six cent square bills, six cents big, uh, you know, hard bait, like uh, big crank baits. I buy the same shaky heads. I buy Zoom, you know, whatever. And it's like you buy the same stuff every single time. With a, with a monthly subscription, it lets you change that up, it lets you buy different things and, and you get different things in the mail and it's all premium stuff. So super cool deal. If you're interested in signing up, my code is DC Super Six. I'll put it on the screen now and you can get $10 off your very first sack if you wanted to sign up for that, which I would highly recommend. So that's the first giveaway. The second giveaway is this lure lock, lure locker. And it's, this one actually isn't the one I'm gonna give away because this one's mine. Um, and actually these boxes have been in my boat so they've already got some of my tackle in them. But I'm gonna give you a brand new one. This one's only got four of the five boxes. My other one's at the house. Actually, I think I gave the other one to my papa. Um, but anyhow, these lure lock boxes are awesome. As you can see, they're just a, they're a storage box, obviously. But the cool thing about these boxes is in the very bottom of them, they have a sticky gel. And uh, the good thing about that is you can see like even with this, this divider, it's a little bit difficult to pull it up. So what that does is it doesn't allow this thing to, to move around. I'll, I'll pull my jerk bait box out so you can really get a good look at that. And a lot of people are skeptical. I, I understand that I was too about this gel. You know, like, like I don't want to have my baits in that, in that lure lock box that's got the gel in it. I don't want the gel to get off on my, on my baits. Well, I can promise you one thing. This is a very expensive square bill crankbait box right here. Um, all six cents baits. If that gel was gonna stick on your baits, I promise I would not be one using it, but two definitely wouldn't be promoting it. But I wanted to show you, like for say with this box right here, this has got my lip, some some of my lipless crank baits in it, and uh, anyhow, you can see how they're like some you know they don't move around. The ones that do move around, those are loud baits. The hooks are moving, but the actual baits aren't moving. What that does is they don't beat around in your boxes. The hooks don't dull, and I think the longevity of your bait, the paint, it's not gonna scrape off just because your baits aren't beating around. So anyhow, the way to win this lure lock system or lure locker system, it's gonna come with five uh, boxes inside of it, is you have to buy something from Lure Lock's website. Um, you can buy anything at all. Use my code DC20. You have to use my code DC20 when you check out. It's gonna save you 20% off. And then after that, screenshot your receipt from wherever you bought it. You know, when you bought it from their website, screenshot the receipt, email it to me or direct message me on Facebook or Instagram. Just a picture of your receipt. Just say, hey man, I bought this and, and have your name on there. That way I can get in touch with you. But um, yeah, that way, I can pick a winner. This is gonna be announced in uh, on May the 11th, so you got a little bit of time left on this one. The six cent sack is going to be announced on my next video, I'm picking a winner. So this video, as the comments are right now, is your last chance to win a three month subscription to the six sack. You still got a little while on this, but I would go ahead and do it. We've already had a couple of subscriptions, not, too, not we haven't had too many people sign up for it yet or, or buy anything, so right now your odds are pretty high of winning. Anyhow, I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate you guys, every single one of you, uh, especially if you've made it this far through the video and me talking. It means a lot. I, honestly, I put a lot of work into this. I do uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and it's a lot of work. It doesn't pay It doesn't pay a ton either, which is the kind of frustrating thing. So I'm definitely not just in this for the money. I really appreciate it. Uh, my last video I made helping that kid out, 
that's just one of the best things I've ever done fishing. And anytime I can help someone out, that's what that's the reason I got into YouTube. I just love helping people out, um, especially learning how to fish because it's something that I was taught by my papa and and Gerald, and I had some really good mentors fishing. So I got to learn some really cool things. But I know that not everyone does, and people struggle catching fish. I struggle catching fish too a lot of times. But I do feel like there's some things that I can bring value to you guys, and um, it it honestly makes me feel good when you guys set, you send me a message and say, hey man. I learned how to do this because of you or I learned how to do this because of you or I bought a six cents bait and I caught my first fish ever on a you know whatever bait that stuff you you I can't express how cool that is for uh, people that I feel like I know you guys and I know that you feel like you know me it's just weird that we don't know each other um so it's a weird disconnect but it's, it's really cool it means a lot to me so i appreciate all the support i really do um if you want to support me the, the main way the main thing to do is um the the discount codes that i give out I, had, I get no kickback i don't get a i don't get a commission off of it i get nothing like that they're just brands who i work with and i reached out to them and wanted to give back to you guys so i guess the only way you could really help me out Make sure you're subscribed and uh, like liking the videos, commenting on the videos, turn on the notification bell so you get so you get notified of those videos. But support the brands that support me. That's if I could ask for anything, uh, donations or anything like that. I don't. I, I'm I'm good on donations, but I think if you could support the brands that support me, that would mean a lot. Just because these guys know that these guys support y'all. Like they want me to be doing these giveaways. They want me to be giving these codes. 20% off on this. 25% off on everything that's quantum. 10% off on everything is six cents. 15% uh, on everything is TH Marine. Like I do my best to get these discount codes. I get nothing back for that. I don't, I don't have to get them. I just feel like you guys could save a little money. I know times are tough, and um, and even if they weren't tough. Hell, we all like saving some money every now and then. But anyhow, enough of me rambling. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm just super thankful for you guys. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. I wish that you would go subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on the notification bell if you liked all this rambling that I've done. Give this video a thumbs up. And I'll see you all on the next one.